my girlfriend wanted Yu's to get married, but I caught her cheating with her ex the night before our wedding. She must have noticed I was checking her out at the party because she kept looking in my direction. After a lot of internal struggle, I approached her. I wasn't as chubby now, I just had a noticeable weight, which runs in my family, and I've been that way since childhood. In the past, many girls had turned me down, laughed in my face because I tried hitting on them, and I wasn't expecting anything different with Maya. She was gorgeous, and I expected her to either snub me or pretend like I didn't exist, but she was different. She spoke to me politely, and we talked for the rest of the night, and had such a great time. It was my first time feeling that good and confident in a long time, and because we clicked so well, we exchanged contacts and I gave her a call as soon as I got home. From there we started seeing each other often, went on lunch dates, and our friendship grew as time passed. I found Maya to be different from other girls of her age. She was kind, witty, and intelligent, I figured from the first night we talked. I wasn't just attracted to Maya because of her beauty. What attracted me most to Maya was her intelligence and sense of humor. Not so many girls had given me the opportunity to go on multiple dates with them, but Maya was generous to give me a shot. I was always attracted to intelligent people. I didn't like being around people with no life goals, vision, or future plans, and Maya was all of it. She was just out of college, actively scavenging the job openings, rushing for the marathon of interviews and whatnot. I loved to see how serious she was about her career. I never had a real relationship apart from one in high school. Not because I couldn't keep one, but because the girls wanted something more than a nerdy's boy love, which I didn't have. So, meeting and dating a girl like Maya felt like a win for me. It was three months since she had graduated, and she had no luck in the job hunting game. She had left the college dorm and shifted with her friend, but it was becoming difficult for her to survive. So her parents were not well off to support her post-graduation. They had made it clear to her that she needed to care for herself after graduation. The friend with whom Maya lived was very clumsy and would often have a boyfriend at the house. Since it was a one-bedroom flat, it became difficult for Maya to live in that house. Maya said living at her friend's place was taking its toll on her mental health so I asked her to take a break for a while and move in with me. Although I was just starting my career in tech, the pay was good. I earned enough to care for both of us without her contribution. We lived in a spacious one-bedroom apartment, and I single-handedly took care of rent, paid the bills, and took care of groceries. I never complained because I loved her and didn't see a big deal in spending some extra bucks on her. Blind love, yeah, throughout our relationship, everything went on smoothly, and we barely had any major fights. Amaya managed the house, did the dishes and laundry, went grocery shopping, and took care of my bed needs. She was so great in bed, and I enjoyed every bit of the moment with her. Before Maya and I started dating, she told me about her ex-boyfriend in college and how he maltreated her. I assured her I was a gentleman, and I kept my promise. In the past, I had never had issues controlling my anger, and I never laid my hands on anybody or a woman, so she was safe with me. So leave it or not, I had never cheated in the past, and I didn't plan on cheating on her. Also, my work was 60% remote and 40% on site, so I shuffled our house in the office, and this allowed us to spend enough time together. To show how transparent I was with her, I even came up with the rules of telling each other wherever we went, who we were with, and what we were doing whenever we went out. I did this to show her I meant serious business with her, and that I had nothing to hide. As our relationship progressed, we introduced each other to our parents, and in no time, we knew all of each other's friends, mainly those close to us. I didn't have a best friend, but Maya had. Her name was Andrea, and she used to hang out with Maya all the time. She also visited the house regularly, and we were almost like family. Andrea and Maya were roommates back at college. Unlike Maya, Andrea worked as a retail store manager at a popular store in our city, and lived with her two sisters, who were also working women. So as per Andrea, Maya was able to crack the job for the same supermarket, but Maya declined the offer because she wanted a corporate job. I guess she became very comfortable with me providing for her, although I didn't say this to her. Andrea would often tease her and call her spoiled. Maya claimed she had worked hard, juggling many part-time jobs as a teenager and while in college, so she deserved to be relaxed and cared for. On my end, I have happy to give her that break, I didn't have any issues with taking care of Maya. In fact, I was glad I could provide and take care of my woman. One evening, while we were at a fancy restaurant to celebrate my promotion, Maya suddenly asked, What do you say if we get married? Um, I stuttered. I was taken aback for a moment, but it didn't totally come as a surprise. I had been thinking of settling down with her, but I still had a lot of things under consideration. So I told her we would be married when the time was right, and she smiled. To be honest, I wanted Maya to start her career before we took our relationship to the next level. I always wanted to get married and have a family. After Maya came into my life, I've always imagined my life with her. I had even bought the ring to propose to her but was waiting for her to get her career straight. So, But somehow she found the ring in my closet, and before she could make any assumptions, I had to make an early proposal. The first time Maya broke the news to her best friend, Andrea, she looked more shocked than happy. Not the kind of shock that her best friend was getting married, 
but the shock that her best friend was getting married to me. So I expected more excitement from her, especially since she would be Maya's maid of honor, but the excitement did not come. Her response was, are you being serious? Andrea then tossed her purse on the floor and held Maya's ring. Then she looked up at me and forced a smile. Trust me, I had been around them for a very long time, and I could tell when her smile was forced and when it was genuine. Although I didn't mention it to Maya, I felt Andrea was not happy for her friend. In the past, I noticed Andrea was always awfully nice to me. Once we three were hanging out in our apartment, while Maya went inside the kitchen to prepare some quick snacks, Andrea hinted to me that Maya was not who I thought she was. I understood what she meant, but I played dumb. I asked her what did she mean. Andrea said that I would figure it out eventually. She was drunk. Come! Sides, she did not pass a direct message, and I could not conclude based on that. In no time, we started planning our wedding. Maya wanted a big fat wedding, the kind she would invite all her friends, family, and frenemies, but that was not what I wanted. First, it was significantly above my budget since she would not be contributing a penny to it. Secondly, I believed there was life after a wedding. I loved kids, and I wanted us to have a child almost immediately and that meant we'd need to rent a bigger apartment and take care of other things. So though Maya had all the reasons to want a big wedding, I still kicked against it. She mentioned something about having the perfect expensive wedding, but we both knew it was impossible. Surprisingly, Maya got a job a couple of months before our wedding. I told her I could not afford to buy the brand of wedding gown she needed and pay for her bridesmaid's dresses, so she figured it was better to get a job and handle most of her bills instead of bugging me. Her wise decision impressed me, and I hoped she would keep up with her career after we married. Also, I expected she would contribute to our wedding plans with her new job in the picture, but she didn't. Everything she earned was channeled to her gown, shoes, accessories, and everything her bridesmaids needed, so I ended up paying for the wedding venue, hall, cakes, and almost everything on my own. Two weeks before our wedding, I noticed that Andrea began to text me more and more. She'd text me in the morning to ask if I slept well and she'd text me as she went shopping with Andrea. In fact, it was a long list and reasons to text me, but whenever we met or she came to our house to help Maya with something, she would remain calm, so Maya would not suspect anything was off between us. At one point, I had to tell Andrea to stop calling and texting me because it was getting out of hand. I was afraid that it might jeopardize my relationship with Maya. I was too afraid to mention it to Maya because I didn't want it to ruin their friendship or wedding preparation. I knew how much she loved and trusted Andrea, and deep down, I believed Andrea was trying to seduce me or get me to change my mind about marrying her best friend. On the night of Maya's bachelorette party, I understood why. I was in the club section of the hotel we were all lodging at a day before our wedding, so I was drinking with some of my friends when Andrea called me and said there was something she wanted to show me. At first I didn't want to go because I believed she wanted to seduce me one last time, but when she mentioned Maya and a familiar name, I took one of my friends and went upstairs. When I got to the hotel room they were using for their small party, I saw Andrea outside the door waiting for me. She told me something I could not believe, and when I opened the door my heart nearly fell into my stomach. So before I opened the door, I heard soft moans from their room, and my chest constricted as I touched the door's handle. To my greatest shock, I saw Maya on top of another man, which I suspected was the male stripper they hired to entertain them. The moment she saw me, she jumped off him and struggled to cover herself with the sheets. So almost instantly I recognized him. As Andrea had told me, he was her college ex-boyfriend, and I didn't even know when I started crying. It was too much to handle, and I walked out of them without saying a word. My friend who had escorted me upstairs was also mortified. Tiboso, Istabite. He tried to talk to me or maybe calm me down, but I shrugged him off and walked out. As I walked down the corridor, I heard Maya yelling at Andrea, why would you do this to me? My life was going perfectly, but you ruined it, Andrea yelled back. I told you he deserved better. Rick has been nothing but good to you. I told you to break up with that loser boyfriend of yours and be with Rick, but you wanted to eat your cake and have it, I didn't bother to look back. I could not believe Maya had been playing me the whole time. It was too painful to accept, and I wished I could handle the hurt I felt, but I couldn't. Andrea even tried to follow me. I slammed the door in her face. I drank until I could not differentiate between a shadow and an actual person. The following morning I woke up to a ton of missed calls from Maya and some other people. So when I left the room Maya was already wearing her wedding gown. She looked so miserable. The moment she saw me, she ran to me and asked why I wasn't dressed for our wedding, and hearing that made me so furious. Out of anger I pushed her away and announced I was calling off our wedding. Everyone was shocked, and have kept asking why I changed my mind. Even my parents were shocked to see me in that state, because no one expected this to come after all the money I had spent on the preparations, but I was too heartbroken to speak. So I stared at Maya with blood boiling down my spine. 
I went back into my room and locked myself. From inside the room I could hear my parents and some of our friends asking Maya about the reason behind my decision but she didn't respond. She just pretended to faint and a couple of people caught her before her body touched the floor. After cleaning up from the previous night I left the hotel room with a few belongings I had taken there. I switched off my phone after I dropped an apology message on my friend's WhatsApp group chat and switched off my phone. Please don't blame me I didn't know how else to react. It's been a week since then and I still don't know how to come to a term that I was being played on. Update 1, hi everyone. Thank you for your comments. It means so much to me. Some of you commented in my original post about why I didn't do the background check with my friend's sister before dating Maya. So the thing was, I was stupid. I did not feel the need to do it aggressively. However, I remember subtly asking my friend's sister about Maya during the initial dating phase. She responded that they both were in different apartments, and Maya was her friend's and after college, they were not in touch, so it didn't help much. Speaking of Maya, I met her yesterday, and she was so mad at me for standing her up at our wedding. It's kind of funny, right? She ignored what she did and made me the villain in this story. She told her parents I canceled the wedding because I had drunk too much the previous night and I wasn't in my right senses. I think she is mistaking my quietness for foolishness. I didn't want anything to do with her anymore and I didn't understand why she thought we both could be a thing again. To make things worse, she admitted that she was still having an affair with ex-boyfriend when we were dating, which broke me more. She did so because I was always working and I didn't give her the kind of attention she needed. Right now I am so confused I never neglected Maya or turned down any of her needs. She was also why I always worked so hard, I could take care of our bills and still care for her. Even as I type this, the thought of her sleeping with her boyfriend behind my back still hunts me. And right now she's asking us to fix another wedding date, because she cannot bear the embarrassment. To think that she only apologized once about how she had hurt me, shows that she never loved or valued me as much as I loved her. It was more of a one-person thing. I've told her I cannot marry her. I just cannot. So meanwhile I kicked her out of my house and changed my locks. After I met with Maya yesterday, I also met Andrea to thank her for helping me dodge a bullet. It was through Andrea that I knew Maya had been getting money from me to take care of her boyfriend, and any time she asked for a ridiculous amount to buy something, she gave it to him. Also I never mentioned that Maya went to the gym every evening while we lived together, she was just obsessed with being fit, and I didn't think something was wrong with that. Well, I just found out that she was meeting with her college boyfriend every day, and most of the time, she said she was with Andrea, but she wasn't. She only asked Andrea to cover up for her. And the reason Andrea was so shocked when Maya showed her the engagement ring was because, a couple of days earlier, she had told Andrea she wanted to settle down with her college boyfriend because she was deeply in love with him. Now I understand why Andrea wouldn't stop texting and calling. She was looking for a way to tell me what was happening, but I didn't give her the opportunity. Sometimes, I feel I deserve this because I was so stupid that I got trapped so easily. So I've made up my mind, and there won't be another wedding. I will be meeting her again in two days to trash her belongings. I will make another update soon. Update 2 Hello, everyone. Sorry for the delay in updating. I met Maya again the second time three weeks ago, and something unexpected happened. Meanwhile, when I told her we would never be together again, talk more about getting married, she looked me in the eye and said, Do you think calling off our wedding will help you find a better woman? LOL, no woman in her right mind would want to be with an overweight man like you. You should consider yourself lucky to marry a woman like me. In my entire life, I had never been insulted like that, and it hurt so much that it came from someone I once loved, or someone who claimed she loved me. At that point I knew the kind of person she was. Although it's hard to admit, I realized she had been using me the whole time. I know I'm overweight, but I didn't want to where my wife felt like she was doing me a favor. I knew how those kinds of marriages always turn out to be. We didn't talk much that day because she threw my engagement ring on me and walked out in anger. I blocked her on all our mutual social media platforms and even her number. But, before I blocked her parents from calling me, I visited them and told them how much a whore their daughter was, and they were so disappointed when they found out the truth. Oh, about a week later, after Maya walked out on me at the cafe, a strange number began to call me repeatedly. When I picked it up, I immediately recognized Maya's voice. She sounded different, calmer, and more respectful. Without beating around the bush, she asked if we could meet because she had something important to tell me but I insisted she say it over the phone. But before she said it, she started apologizing. She asked me to forgive and forget everything that happened between us in the past, so we could start on a fresh slate. Guess what? Maya said she wanted to tell me she was pregnant, and I found that really odd. So and without waiting for me to say another word, she added, I'm pregnant with your baby, Rick, and I busted into a loud laugh. So I told her it wasn't April Fool's yet, and she was already pulling pranks. Then I ended the call on her. And like I expected, she didn't stop calling so I was forced to block the number too. It turned out that her boyfriend had abandoned her after he knew she could no longer take care of him and when she broke the news of the pregnancy to him. So when it didn't work, she thought she could pull a fast one on me. Since then she has been trying to call me with strange numbers, 
and I kept rejecting them. Just two days ago, she showed up at my house uninvited. Andrea was there with me. So when she saw Andrea, she attacked her with her filthy words, calling Andrea a whore who destroyed her best friend's life. She even accused me and Andrea of having an affair and cheating on her. I had to call the police on her. And yesterday I filed a restraining order for her. Orsdi, ad puntishans pompot orant under yeb patoid of azir mikorns up an auto force me essence, she is spirited on skaplight of a I can only imagine how miserable her life would be without a job and someone to help her raise the baby. As for Andrea and I, there's nothing between us, and I don't think we'll ever be a thing. She shows up sometimes to check on me. Right now I just want to have my life fixed, and hopefully, this broken heart of mine will heal one day. While I still cannot forgive her for what she did to me, I guess she got what she deserved. I'm still trying to heal and move on. Any advice would be highly appreciated. Thanks. Now on to the next story. Story 2. I-25M was planning to propose to my girlfriend, 26F, but she admitted after a night out that she cheated on me and is begging for forgiveness. How do I go about this? I've known my girlfriend since we were in kindergarten. She's helped me through thick and thin. Through periods of depression when my parents were being abusive when I lost my grandparents through it all. She's genuinely my hero. She's also so warm-hearted, caring, selfless, and the best person I know. About a month ago, I told her parents and mine that I wanted to marry her, and we agreed to rent out our favorite amusement park where I would propose to her, which is also where I confess my love to her. It is still rented for 29th August. It was all so perfect, until yesterday, my girlfriend said that she's going to a karaoke event with her female friends. At 2 a.m. today, she returned, clearly drunk, and collapsed in bed. This morning, she woke up in tears and apologized profusely. After she'd calmed down, she explained that she was drunk and decided to have sex with another man at the party after the karaoke and regretted it afterwards a lot. When I asked why she'd do this, she said that she was so drunk that she completely blanked on the fact that she was in a relationship with me. So that sounded to me like she would have sex with other men if she wasn't with me. So I asked if she was unhappy in bed. But she reassured me that that's not the case, and couldn't ask for anything more from me and regrets everything she did. I had so many more questions that I wanted to ask, but my heart completely broke and I began crying. She hugged me and said that she would do anything to get my trust back and constantly ask not to break up over this. I said that I need some time to think and went into a separate room. I have now been sitting in this room heartbroken for many hours now, and don't know what to do. She said that she'd do anything to get my trust back, so I have hope that there's something I can change to ensure that she never cheats on me again like always going with her when she goes outside. But that feels really controlling and disgusting to me. Is there any way to not break up and still have trust again that she will never cheat on me again? If I do break up though, I don't think I can ever love anyone like her again. Please try to understand and comprehend that I've known her since not long after I was even born. We were often in the same class, doing the same school work together, playing together, eating together, doing everything together. I spent many years trying to confess my love, We've spent many years living, loving, smiling together. She feels like a part of me by now. How can I just throw that part away and pretend I'll be fine? I'm saying this because I know it's common on this subreddit to basically just say move on. But I really don't think that's possible for me. So I'm really looking for responses that suggest how we can stay together with rules to ensure that this never happens again. I would also like to hear suggestions about whether I tell mine and or her parents of the incident. I'll have to tell them to cancel the amusement park event, so I probably will have to tell them what happened, but I could excuse the cancellation as me not feeling quite ready yet or something. I'm mainly considering this because I don't want her parents to be mad slash yell at her or be cold towards her. Because as I explained before, she's always been my hero and I don't want someone who's helped me so much get hurt, especially because I've experienced how much that hurts. Update 1, the title is probably a good enough summary to let you read this post without lacking much information anyway, so here's the update. A day after the post, I decided to ask for clarification as to what exactly happened, so I was mentally prepared for every possible response, except the one she gave me. From all of the information she gave me, I have tried organizing the most important information below. Before the karaoke, the boyfriend of one of her friends, whom I'm acquainted with but not particularly close with, decided to join last minute. So let's call him Richard. During the karaoke her female friends kept daring her to chug beers. She told them to stop daring her after three drinks, but they kept insisting, and making her feel bad by saying stuff like you never drink much anyway. So, just for today, try to have some fun and stop ruining the moment and other stuff. So she continued, can confirm that my girlfriend normally drinks far less, two beers max normally. She says that she remembers drinking ten beers in about an hour. She says it's likely she drank more after that, but doesn't remember anything after the ten drinks, except waking up back home. She says that the drinks very likely made her blackout drunk. In my original post I didn't provide much detail about when she returned from karaoke due to the word limit on posts and me not thinking that the information would matter much. Autumn the information would matter much. Speak at a counseling writings at Bob Spethy enough. 
Regardless, the day she returned, her female friends were carrying her by her shoulders and I had to also carry her to her bed. Her legs were barely moving, her body was not holding upright, and she wasn't able to form coherent sentences. So although until then, I did not have any experience with a person who blacked out, I can only imagine that her situation was a blackout. So I do also believe that she got blackout drunk. When she woke up she had 10 missed calls from her friends. She called back, her friends explained what happened while she was blackout drunk. During the karaoke, Richard said that he needed to talk to her. My geef, for a moment to strategize on how they'd sing as partners. The friends decided to continue the karaoke while Richard and my geef strategized. Zambando. After half an hour neither Richard or my geef were back, so they started checking for where they were. Richard wasn't picking any calls. After an unknown amount of time, Richard's geef saw Richard having sex with my geef. Of course, Richard and his geef broke up, and then all of the females brought my geef home. After finding out about this, my geef was mad and shouted how dare he rape me. I was in the basement before I saw my geef cry, which is why I didn't hear this, but her friend said, he's saying she consented. My geef says that she was speechless and hung up because she couldn't believe she consented to that and started crying because she believed that she cheated on me by consenting and thought our relationship was over. She didn't know that legally, if a person is drunk, consent or not, you cannot have sex with them. I was surprised she thought this, because even if you don't know the laws on this, how could it possibly be morally? or even solely logically speaking fine to ask for someone's consent when they're barely able to communicate or think. I was really shocked by this story and started feeling really bad for my geef. I explained to her that this is rape, not consensual sex, so I hugged her and tried to comfort her and asked if she needed anything and how she was feeling. She said that because she doesn't even remember anything after the drinks, she doesn't feel any of the responses normally felt after rape, like trauma. She said that she's mainly disgusted by Richard but also mad at herself for losing control so easily because of a dare and hurting me like this. So we went to the police station to report this. The investigation is still ongoing. Also, to be honest, I was still a little suspicious that the story could have been made up or misconstrued. So I went to the karaoke place that they went to and explained the situation and asked if I could see the camera's footage. They agreed, and there was footage of the exact situation that I was told playing out. There was also footage of Richard asking my gee f sex and my gee responding in a very drunk and barely audible voice I like. That bastard really thought that was consent. I have of course also provided this footage to the police. Although the police's investigation has not concluded, the evidence I saw is in my opinion enough for me to believe her. So my gee volunteered to explain the situation to both of our parents, because she wants to take accountability for her actions. Her parents were very apologetic and sweet about the situation which I appreciated a lot. My parents brought us both together to make sure that all of us were on the same page, and we had a big group hug, and my dad said something that really resonated with me. This situation is really shitty for everyone, but I know that love will prevail in the end. Unfortunately, it was too late to go back on the we rented that day, so we, me, my parents, her parents, agreed to proceed with it, but without the proposal, and invited a bunch more people. I told both mine and her parents that I would decide when the time is right to tell her that we initially rented that amusement park to propose. I told her about a week ago when things were more back to normal and her feelings seemed very complicated as one would expect, but I think her summary of her emotions being devastated but understanding is pretty good. Thanks to the advice of many Redditors, we have decided to take therapy which has been really helpful in helping us understand each other and get even closer. She proposed herself that she never wanted to drink alcohol again. She said that it never even tasted that good anyway and never made me happy in the long term. Ah, she said that she mainly just drinks to fit in but now plans to stop. So far that goal has been going great. We also realize that we both always want to do events like Karawak together but sometimes worry about bothering the other. Even on the day that she went with her friends, she wanted to go with me but thought that I looked busy so went alone. I was not busy. We have worked hard at being more communicative and expressing our feelings more, and it has seriously been great. I have also told her about my Reddit post. I want to thank everyone for all of the advice, even if it was a little mean. We are both so happy right now and I have faith that despite this bump in the road, we'll keep riding this car forever.